Hello everyone, I am Tacit and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War event objectives for the Spring Break event. I realized it was 2021, but I didn't realize it was already Spring Break. <laughs> Not sure why they have a Spring event in the middle of winter, but obviously it fits the kingdom and everything. But as far as the troop, it's uh, okay. It comes with a really good arcane though. Uh, definitely make sure to stock up on this uh, arcane. It is a uh, green-blue arcane. You can use this for web spinner, you can use this for truffle, you can use this for Beatrix. There's a lot of really good green blues and if you haven't already upgraded them now would be a great time to go and stock up on uh, them as they're only 200 glory each which is the cheapest they're ever going to get so uh, definitely make sure to stock up as far as our troop itself is pretty average uh, main gimmick it has is it has a plus one into two different colors into specifically red and green there's still no troop that has plus two into a single color there are three hero classes that have two or three into a single color however no troop that does it specifically into one color and uh, now we have this for the plus one plus one and we also have Queen Aurora if you're looking for six plus ones uh, which can also end up doing pretty uh, similar uh, overall, it's uh, pretty bad. Its ability doesn't really do too much either. It's basically just a standard single target buffer, which generally are uh, de dead content upon arrival, and this one's pretty much no different. Uh, it ends up giving uh, some magic to an ally, and then mana equal to half their uh, mana cost. And if they are Fae, it also blesses and enchants them. So overall, nothing really too special with that, and you're not really going to be using this troop. Uh, you might be able to use it for a little bit extra glory this week, as it does have a glory bonus. But aside from that, you're not really going to be using it for uh, much beyond that. If we go over to the event thingy right over here, we of course have the 10% to all fade a 10% to all mystics and we got ourselves the five pvp glory whenever you end up using this uh, one easy way that you could use this is use a quick kill team basically set into a quick foil we weapon she ends up feeding you a bunch of additional mana just from her links you can just go and quick kill uh, one trophy casual pvp and you get five additional glory every single time and you can get about a thousand glory per hour by uh doing that uh, overall not as good as the glory rate of doing something like a vault event whenever a vault event comes around but if you're looking for a little bit extra glory it does uh um, it could end up being used for that this week, if nothing else. So you have that as an option. As far as the event key drop table, it's one of the most interesting things happening this week, aside from the new uh, faction this uh, Friday. Uh, event key drop table is pretty good, regardless of what point you are uh, within the game this week. So as far as the main options, there are uh, four of them that you mainly want to get. Uh, do keep in mind, there are five things here that are not obtainable, though. The uh, Doom of Nature, this thing... Gosh, I have no clue when we're getting a next Doom event. <laughs> they feel like they're so long away. Well, I know when. They happen between each one of the things, but they take absolutely forever to cycle. But uh, Nature, uh, Doom, uh, you will not be able to get in the event key drop table. The other four things you will not be able to get in the event key drop table are things like the Sunken Fleet Troops. Any of them that say Sunken Fleet. You will not be able to get uh, these. You have to go and get go to the uh, Sunken Fleet in the Underworld and use your Chaos Shards there in order to go and unlock them. But it's pretty good troops, Mirage Queen and uh, Water Elemental if you do do those. But they are not in the event key drop table. So those five. Uh, everything else here, though, is in the drop table. And the four main ones that you're going to be wanting to go for are the following. Uh, so Child of Summer. Child of Summer basically ended up replacing Tapon when she came into the game. And she converts all brown into red and then conjures a Firestorm. Main reason being that she gets a Firestorm on top of her value. Whereas the other thing just does a simple poison, which is generally good to be much worse than a storm that uh, goes perfectly into your convert. It's a uh, green yellow and it uh, of course has some power so it ends up working out pretty good as a man accumulator. Uh, the absolute two best ones that you're going to want to be looking for though is really early on in the game you want to be going for uh, Leprechaun. Uh, Leprechaun uh, ends up doing a bunch of uh, explosions. It does it with empowers. So you get to do this from turn one. It has a link going into itself. It's only 12 mana cost. It's one of the best 10 troops in the entire game as far as just overall usability and is uh, one of the best overall mana accumulators just for running in any team. There's pretty much almost Almost no team where this would not end up working and it's just so good for absolutely everything so uh if you don't have a copy of this yet if you just started recently definitely make sure you open to some event keys this week to go get a leprechaun uh, aside from that the main really good trip you want to be looking for as far as slightly higher rarity is queen Titania. she's probably the strongest thing overall as far as damage output from this uh kingdom she has uh, quite a few things going for her she's pre pretty much one of the best fairy fires still within the game where she fairy fires a random enemy whenever you end up doing the extra turn on top of that it also she also gets to do full aoe damage to all enemies and she also has an extra turn whenever there are 13 plus reds on the board. And if you end up feeding her with something like Child of Summer or some kind of other red uh, accumulator, she ends up working out really good. She's normally used with Yagui Queen Atania combo with some kind of red generator and power and then one other option normally off a hero. And it's a pretty solid team. She can end up getting a lot of damage output for it. And she's using a lot of um, no mythic teams as well, as well as basically a lot of uh, cast heavy teams. So really, really great pickup to get. And uh, just double off her uh, with her boost ratio and everything can get a lot of value out of how much damage she could do between Fairy Fire the boost ratio and just her base damage in general so uh definitely a really good uh pickup 
to uh, end up considering getting a copy or two of if you don't currently have any. And lastly, the other one you'd want to get, not because it's a good troop, but because it's the only mythic from this kingdom. So if you want to get it beyond 10 stars, I believe it's 14 stars this week, I can't remember. But um, Suna, uh, she's a pretty useless troop. However, um, she is required as she is the only mythic currently for this place. So she is required to go get uh, Bright Force upgraded. And yeah, it can currently reach power level 14. But of course, the main reason you get a Suna is to get the 1 HP from getting it to a uh, 10 star. So uh, you end up getting a permanent 1 HP when you end up doing that. So a little bit extra bonus, but uh, overall, probably the least uh, uh, high priority one to end up getting there as far as the ones. Uh, Queen Natanya definitely being highest priority, and if you don't have any copies of Leprechaun, that being the other main thing. And if you want to get Child of Summer, um, and so working pretty good with Queen Natanya, so you're probably going to get it along the way of trying to get a Queen Natanya anyway, so works out quite nicely. Anyways, as far as the uh, weekly events, of course we got ourselves the uh, faction event, we have ourselves extra uh, spell damage, so you could basically just run a bunch of full AoE, anything that hits all enemies, and you're pretty much going to be good to go for the entirety of the event. As far as where you can end up running obviously something really heavy into queen natanya you can simply feed child of summer into queen natanya auto win boom and you're pretty much good to go and you basically set your hero class to whatever you want to kind of accumulate a little bit more mana in this case extra purple for her though you could also go red or however else you want to do it and uh, you could just use basically any weapon that hits all enemies to synergize with queen natanya ideally something that doesn't really block her so you can use those as your two primary things since it doesn't really matter if you get child of summer back up you're mostly just using her for her first cast and you just queen natanya queen natanya into war and peace and you're pretty much good to go or just keep spamming Queen of Tanya until you win either or but um, yeah it's a pretty straightforward event and uh, should be pretty quick uh, with the options that we have. Not only do we have really high spell damage, but we have the additional spell damage off of the uh, metal. So uh, really good synergy in that, and they should uh, and they do 100% stack. So it should go super, super quick as far as uh, getting this event done. And as far as uh, the rooms that you take, uh, it's basically just rarity order. So as long as you do rarity order, you should pretty much be good to go for this event. Anyways, other things that we got going on this week. We got a faction event for Mirrored Halls tomorrow, which is a decent farming faction. Not the absolute best in the game, but it has uh, four treasure room, if not mistaken, one in like each of its little corners. We have the Fey little fairy bonus coming in on uh, Wednesday. Uh, this is a pet, of course, we already have, but um, if you haven't gotten it yet, there's uh, more copies there or getting upgraded. Uh, Thursday, we have the Hierophant uh, Hero class. Um, it's not too bad. I don't feel like it's used too often, but it does have a really interesting gimmick and in that it has triple damage to burning while having cleanse attached to it. It is currently the only hero class and likely to stay the only hero class that has both triple damage on burning while also having cleanse. Uh, this is obviously really good against freeze, so you can kind of skull spam burn uh, against freeze teams and kind of be perfectly fine on your hero. Uh, it's very situational when you would use it, and it's very rarely used. However, it's not a completely useless hero class. It's definitely not a high priority as far as upgrading a hero classes, but uh, it's definitely a utility you do eventually get. And as far as this Friday, we got ourselves a new uh, faction coming into the game that's going to be associated to Wild Court. Uh, it's actually going to be bringing in another 50% as well to something that already has 50%, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how that is, because the 50% is already on a hero, and now they're adding another 50%, this time specifically on a troop. So I'm not sure if they're going to double up all the 50% in the game. Obviously, uh, even though um, the tour bonus is about to get a second 50 percent this friday uh we don't have a 50 percent for every typing in the game so i don't know we'll just have to see exactly what happens with that kind of weird that we're getting a second one for uh one already Anyways, as far as the uh, Soul Forge is concerned, uh, we have ourselves uh, pretty much nothing of value as far as the Mythics are concerned. Uh, unless you're getting them for your Kingdom upgrading purposes, you'd pretty much ignore absolutely every single one of these. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first time Tanya has been in Soul Forge since he got buffed. Basically, he's got a little bit of damage and a slightly lower mana cost. However, he's still pretty useless even with the buff that he ended up getting a couple weeks ago. Um, but this is the first time he has been available since then, so if you were looking for him, he is around. However, uh, he's generally not worth using compared to something like Obsidious. Obsidious does what he does uh, a thousand times better. He does have a backup summon though, but uh, the fact that you need to have higher damage than the opponent makes him uh, not as usable in many situations. But uh, he can get a decent burst damage down if nothing else, but uh, overall um, not really that good of a mythic. But um, you can still pick him up if you want. Aside from that, you might want a reality for the poison. She does have one of the better poisons in the game, but uh, that's really only useful for Scorpius, and Scorpius is a lot less effective. And Flame of Anu and Champion of Anu, just not really that good, and generally stuff that you'd uh, pretty much never use. And if you just happen to get them, you just kind of get them. <laughs> They're not really troops you specifically seek out. So for the most part, I would pretty much just ignore the entirety of troops on Soul Forge. Great time to just um, end up hoarding all your diamonds and waiting for a better week. Anyways, don't forget to get Staff of Bright Forest. I believe we only have eight of these weapons left, if you haven't bought any of them with money. And you've been playing since uh, they were added about uh, several months ago. I can't remember <laughs> at this point how long ago it was. But, uh, of course, they added a little while back a new weapon to every single uh, kingdom. And uh, we've almost cycled through them all. And I believe there's only like eight, nine or so of these left. So make 
sure to grab that if you're going for completionist's sake. Uh, aside from that, uh, we do have Trickster Shot as far as good weapons within Soul Forge. Um, it's a pretty decent one. It's kind of like a reverse Mang in a sense, where it's like a magic-based Mang instead of a attack-based Mang. Essentially what it does is eliminates all armor from an enemy and then deals damage to them, which essentially becomes true damage since you just tore away all the armor. And then it gains two magic boosted by all armor eliminated. So if you end up eliminating 90 armor, you'll gain 32 magic, uh, 30 from the tier, an additional two just from its base value that it will always end up doing. Obviously, this can gain quite a bit of magic, and that's kind of the whole point of it, is to stack a bunch of magic and just try going for one-shots. Normally, the very first hit doesn't end up killing, but every hit beyond that has a pretty good chance to end up getting a uh, kill. And you just kind of keep doing that, spamming it down, and uh, pretty much be good to go. Uh, overall, I do feel like this weapon has been falling off a little bit compared to other options that exist within the game. Especially now that we're starting to get more and more true damage uh, options since uh, it was uh, originally released. But overall, it's uh, still an okay weapon and potentially worth uh, considering getting if you want to use it for a certain playstyle. But uh, it's pretty much the only weapon as far as the one specifically related to uh, this week. Anyways, let's go get into some teams. So as far as teams for the various week, the very first one uh, we've kind of already shown, and that is the War Lore Event one. Uh, this is a pretty standard one, pretty easy to get. Honestly, even if you don't have this team, I would advise opening event keys to try to get this team uh, before the end this week, because uh, not specifically the War and Peace, uh, you normally use something else. But uh, of course, based on the restriction, you kind of have to use it for the event. But a uh, Double Queen Titania into Child of Summer, or Yagwe Queen Titania into Child of Summer, and other similar combinations like that, really 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 strong and obviously you can just use that for the world lore event this week and if nothing else it's also uh, really good just for using whatever if you just want to use it in pvp or something similar um so you have that you can even use it for uh, guild war defend team i think i still use it for one of mine still gets okay run rate Aside from that, uh, we have ourselves uh, for the cheaper team. Uh, of course, you'd also, if you're a newer player, want to be getting Leprechaun, so you'd easily be able to build this team. The Warren piece that you get for free with three Leprechauns that you can get for very exceedingly cheap this week. So you basically just use a triple Leprechaun to feed War and Peace, use Titan or some kind of other similar tanky hero class like Sentinel, uh, anything that can gain barrier on Brown, and uh, just tank up with your hero, go and get your mana up, throw a bit, big War and Peace onto all the enemies that will end up getting extra bonus based on the spell uh, metal things, and you're pretty much just good to go. And you just use a bunch of Leprechaun in that and just it away obviously it'll be quite slower than the queen of tanya team but it's going to be very safe and we'll still end up getting you the win just at a slower rate and being much cheaper so much easier to end up building if you don't have a lot of event keys or the troops uh, required as far as the uh next event uh for um the uh, faction that we have tomorrow, Mirrored Halls, uh, one of the easiest ways to go through it is Finesse. You do have option of uh, yellow and uh, blue, so you can end up going standard Truffle team. You can end up going Iron Gut into Zugoth. Uh, most of the really meta options are uh, available as far as we can end up using, so um, you have quite a few options. But uh, the main reason I uh, show in Finesse here is uh, mostly because um, it has a really high amount of yellows on the very first and final battle. So if you're going through these battles, you can kill them uh, pretty quickly since it ends up doing uh, double damage to all those yellow enemies. So you end up getting uh, your damage down quite a bit quicker and also has a really quick quick kill path So if you're just doing it to try to get through it really quickly on Tuesday to go get the pure faction done really quick with a couple thousand gems Like 2,000 something if you're just gonna go and kind of just rush down the rooms This will be really quick for doing so since you get so much additional damage on the first and final battle If you're doing absolutely every single room this might be slightly slower if you're going all the way uh, You might want to switch to you know iron gut or something similar as you get later into the battles But if you're just doing it for the uh, quick kills you should be perfectly fine with this given that the first and final battle has a really high concentration of yellow Anyways, as far as pure faction for displays, a couple different ways that you can run it, but the main premise is you want to make sure by, by the final battle you have two troops alive in your team, and that is Copycat into Mirrored Queen. As long as you have Copycat into Mirrored Queen into the final battle, you'll pretty much win. The other first two pretty much just depend on whatever you want to roll, so you can just run whatever there. Uh, specifically, I put uh, Glass Golem and just another Mirrored Queen, but uh, the main premise here is you use Copycat in order to create 10 of a uh, ally's mana color, and there's a 50% chance you summon that ally, and you need one of these uh, alive because you have 50% chance to summon a copy of whatever troop you end up targeting so you can end up targeting a troops uh, summoning that troop onto your team and then you can have the copycat copy that if you want so you can go um, other troops as well so for one th weird thing that you can do within this faction uh, it still counts as peer faction as long as your team started as peer faction so you can actually end this faction pretty much with an entire team that's completely different troops so you can actually mimic any troop from any of these battles with the mirrored queen and make it uh, part of your team and then end up copying it if you wanted another copy of it. So you can basically make your team in almost absolutely anything by the end of the delve just by copying other troops within the faction. So there's a lot of ways you could go about doing this. And as long as you have Copycat Mirrored Queen as your base for your team, you should be good to go since you can just copy whatever, get your team kind of built, or just, you know, just copy whatever. <laughs> it doesn't really matter for the most part because Copycat Mirrored Queen alone can solo the final battle. So anything else that you pick up along the way, if you try to pick up other troops uh, along the path, uh, is basically just going to help you win quicker, uh, which can be pretty useful because, uh, of course, the 
enemy does have summon as well. So you might have a little bit of a summon wars, which of course can take dozens of undozens of minutes as uh, some pure factions do. So do be wary of that. And anyways, other than that, uh, we have the hair event uh, class event for this uh, Thursday, of course. The uh, easiest way to go over, uh, do this is just to run a Queen of Tanya quick kill. Uh, basically the same premise as before, just a little bit of a thinner team. And I didn't even bother using hero here, though you could end up using hero, of course, if you wanted to. And uh, you could just feed a bunch of uh, mana accumulation into Queen of Tanya. Just do a simple tryout of uh, summer, do into Queen of Tanya, pretty much good to go. Just get a quick uh, Queen of Tanya, kill them all out, and uh, just do that. And then you double cast it, and they should all be dead. But anyways, that's everything for this week. Of course, when the Friday faction comes out, we'll be going over that quite in depth uh, with everything with that. Other than that, uh, of course, every single night, as we all always do, we stream at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the channel doing Gems of War. And tonight we're going to be doing all of the weekly tasks for the third week of the campaign. So uh, we'll be doing that later. Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I hope you all had a wonderful New Year's, and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye, everyone, and thank you for watching.